Hello there. Welcome to Extending Puppet Advanced Puppet Techniques, a video course published by PACT. My name is Anirban Saha and I am the author of this course. I have worked in infrastructure management for seven years with experiences in large data center based infrastructures, private and public cloud infrastructures with specialization in DevOps methodologies and implementations. I have worked with infrastructures of different scale in number of different industries. My passions include speaking at technology conferences such as Linux Foundation events and puppet camps. I have also authored the book Salt Cookbook and the video course Extending Puppet Puppet Essentials for Beginners published by PAC Publications. We will now go through the course overview. We might ask ourselves as to why do we need to go a step further with Puppet. After all, we have already learned about the amazing tool and are able to write modules for infrastructure services. We are able to test the modules and deploy via continuous integration pipelines. What's next? Like all other tools and services, Puppet also has a limit till which it can handle requests from agents and serve catalogs and other data. After that threshold is reached, Puppet needs to scale so that it is able to keep up with the growing infrastructure needs. If the Puppet server-side components can be isolated from each other, instead of keeping them as a single monolithic server, management of that component becomes much easier and flexible. As we add more services to our infrastructure and each service comes with different levels of complexities, it won't be possible to keep up with them without the help of advanced components such as the Puppet DB. By using exported resources, advanced services and configurations can be much better managed. With growth of the infrastructure and increase in number of agent nodes and roles, it is critical to be able to maintain a proper node classification mechanism. Containers have been one of the hottest topics of the infrastructure ecosystem lately, and Puppet integrates quite well with Docker-based container environments. Running Puppet components in Docker and managing Docker environments with Puppet are essential. It is great to be able to get configuration from the server from agent nodes. However, often it is required to push tasks and configurations from the server to the agent nodes. This method called orchestration can be implemented in Puppet using mCollective. Performing advanced tasks with Puppet modules and creating configurations for complex scenarios is quite easy. Puppet modules can be extended by writing different types of plugins such as factors, types, providers and functions. In the first section of this course, we will look at scaling, exported resources and node classification. We will get started by learning how to load balance Puppet servers to handle scaling the Puppet infrastructure. We will then look at component isolation by separating the certificate authority service to a dedicated node. We will then move on to understanding the concept of exported resources and configuring Puppet DB with PostgreSQL database. Next, we will implement the process of exporting and collecting in modules to generate Puppet configuration by using Puppet DB. Understanding and running the different query methods on Puppet DB will be done next with getting an overview of the Puppet DB dashboard. We will learn to perform external node classification using scripts to manage the node definition process better. Finally, we will use Hira to perform node classification for Puppet agent nodes. In the second section, we will be working with containers and looking at orchestration. First, we will learn to run the Puppet server-side components in Docker containers as standalone services and also as a stack using Docker Compose. We will then learn to run the Puppet agent on Docker containers to fetch catalogs by configuring Hira based node classification process. Next, we'll learn to build, tag, and push Docker images by using the manual, Puppet module, and Packer methods. We'll run multiple application stacks in Docker using Docker Compose by configuring Puppet modules using community modules. Finally, we will understand the concept of orchestration and the process of implementing it in Puppet using mCollective. In the final section, we will concentrate entirely on plugin development for Puppet modules. We'll start with creating custom facts in Puppet modules and retrieving the facts on the Puppet agent nodes. We will then learn to create custom resource types using the Puppet language. We will then move on to advanced plugin development using Ruby and create custom Puppet types. 
we will continue with plugin development and create custom providers to perform backend functions. Finally, we will create custom functions using Ruby to handle infrastructure problems and custom scenarios. The basic prerequisites of this course are some idea of system administration and Linux systems, a workstation capable of running few virtual machines, the Vagrant and VirtualBox softwares installed on the workstation. As this is an advanced course, some working knowledge about Puppet is required along with fair knowledge of Ruby development and container-based infrastructure using Docker. So wait no more as the numerous thrilling and exciting features of the advanced Puppet world are ready to welcome you.